So invite only, it's a feeling more than anything else. It's, it's a whole experience. It's something more than just music, something more than just showing a window. I mean, it is a window, but it, it's showing you the picture of what it's like to be invited into someone's life, be invited into someone's, you know, space. And a lot of the times, like our personal space is something that we keep sacred, we keep it close to ourselves. Invite only in and of itself is a ability to share that with others. I am barely human. I'm Don Jones. Right now, we're in planet Earth. I love it here, it's a really cool place to be. Uh, we're in Florida specifically. I'm just chilling by the pool, just enjoying life. Like I said, I always used to dream about just hanging out in the pool, looking up and seeing palm trees and the blue water and just relaxing, living life. And it's not like everything's scripted, but that part I definitely thought a lot about when I was young. I used to stare into the sky and just envision it. Bro, we're in an undisclosed location. That's first and foremost. And second of all, where dreams get made and reality is just a brief imagination. And then it's back to the work. <laughs> What's up? It's Mark. I know Mark. Uh, and, you know, we're in Orlando in my house right now. Um, welcome to Invite Only. <laughs> yeah, every, every time that comes on, I'm like... That's it right there. I was like, it needs to have that pause. Yeah, when I heard that on the second draft, I was like... I think with this album, having so many people involved is like what made it even more special, like more of like, it's going to have more of an impact. I've never done like a collab album before. Is that said, you're going to end like that? Hmm? That's where you end? I mean, how much more do I need? Because I did 16 and then I did four more. And if you dub that up, that's eight, so that'd be like a bridge or some shit. Uh, or four for a bridge. Alright, so I'm going uh, to take it from the south then. Okay. Hey, it's the day after. Producer, originally from Pennsylvania, residing in LA now. Keep it going like that. I met Don Jones back in college. We actually connected on art. We had art classes together. Like he always were painting. I was always in the art building painting as well. Oh, uh, bro, so we're in the studio. This is like day four in the studio. Oh, I feel you gotta like. Tell me about the shade. Oh, yeah, start over. Turn the swag on 1000. Yo. Okay. We rolling? Yeah, what's going on? Bro, so we're in the studio right now. I think it's like day four. We've been locked in. Yeah, basically this man's about to pull up this track right here. Let me finish up doing these ad libs uh, and some of the dubs and stuff. But so far, this is the hit factory, son. What you talking about? What you know, bro? Look at that. You don't see the money on the wall, bro. Do a collab album for my first time, but with like a really good friend of mine, like my best friend, then um, like just doing it with like, like an industry artist or somebody. I think like is why this is so special to us, you know, because like Don and I have been friends for a long time. You said after the show you'll jump in in your clothes. With my shoes on. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, go for it. He hasn't even hit the blunt yet. No chill. <laughs> there ain't no chill around this oh, and I have my phone in my pocket too. Oh, dang. When I met Mark, it I seen a lot of the qualities that. I was going for that I didn't see in a lot of the people that were around me at that time. And you know, Mark was like, yeah, I'm doing this regardless. Yo, I'm not take, taking no for an answer. Like, yeah, always active, let's get that going right now. T-shirts, you know, hoodies, hats, like, 
what you mean? You know, like, let's go here and make this happen. You know, let's film this. And I was like, yeah, like, that's why I go back to that whole always active as a lifestyle because I've seen it firsthand. Yo, saying 3 a.m. shit. Always, we never sleep. I don't know what sleep was. Sleep, no sleep gang. And then he came with the back. Sleep was something that I used to do when I was a kid. 3 a.m. shit. I fuck with the 3 a.m. Damn, y'all really do be up to like 3 a.m. Don't fuck up if you ain't here. We gotta be on stage in four minutes. Invite only can only be described as an experience. Like, I really don't have any words to, to say, but for me, invite only has been a journey uh, through friendship and through music. Have, how music have put us all together. We were always like left out of other situations and opportunities, but we decided to just create for ourselves. All right, so invite only, invite only season, bro. It's finally here. We're finally putting invite only out, which is wild to me. Cause it's been Isn't that like, crazy, bro? <laughs> it's been like two years, though, or two and a half years, or whatever it is. Um, yeah, dude, it's so crazy. The fact that we just like pulled it out of the vault and like blew the dust off of it, gave it to Caleb, and was like, "Yo, here." We need this mix and master <laughs> like, tomorrow. <laughs> Yo, what's up, guys? I'm Caleb. We're in Orlando, Florida, in the studio at the 3 a.m. headquarters. Fucking in there, and it, we in there. It feels good, bro. Like, we literally all is from a conversation, and now we're getting ready to start making the songs that are gonna be very good quality. You know exactly what we're trying to reach for when it comes to that, bro, and it's it's pretty yeah. exciting. Man. I got involved with I Know Mark and Don Jones through some mutual friends. Um, they had came through for a recording studio session one time, and like I feel like the the reference came out pretty fucking fire, but it's just like it just doesn't have that studio quality, you know. And it, I just we linked up again and uh, started working on a few songs, and it led to us planning and. You know, getting involved with some more records. Mm. Yo, I'm gonna put your phone. That's your phone. Yeah, you need it. Yo, Mark, can I get that? Trying to grow some wings, bro. It led to me taking on the final mixes for an album they had already started working on, which is Invite Only. Down here in Miami, about to hit the studio session with Chris. Make a bang through a five. Oh, yeah, bang. We got the bang. We got the bang. We got the bang. We got the bang. We the bang. We you know this guy always got the red pieces. <laughs> I think invite only came about just by sheer luck and us just getting together. We were in Fort Lauderdale 2021. I came to visit for about a week and we just hung out. Literally for the first few days, we were just hanging out, listening to music, listening to beats and talking, getting together. I mean, the way any music gets created especially timeless music, is it comes to you. It comes from the ether, it comes from the, the, the unseen world that's around us. So we were in a couple of different places. The first night that we recorded, we actually went to uh, Make It Bang studio. Uh, it was, you know, we, we had flown day after and he was just like, you know, cooking up beats we actually cooked up some of the beats right then and there the night, the night we went to the studio. Then we went there, you know, knocked out two tracks. You know, we got, uh, what was it? Is it Legacy or Free? Brinks Truck and Signals, yeah. So we did those two at the studio. We changed the names on some of them, but yeah, we, we did two tracks. I think like invite only, or I know invite only is like a representation of our mindset and we're inviting people into that world of like how we think and how we feel about life, about music, about um, art, about our passions, you know, we're just inviting people into like what is an already like very private life. Most of these songs were all recorded in the same day. And that, that was a really special moment because you could, you could feel the energy between all of us, the synergy that was happening. 
like those moments that we were creating and capturing forever for time's sake? So my name is Logan and I was a videographer for 3AM. Um, everything, capturing every moment, vlogging, videos, music videos for the past three years. Um, everything that you guys have seen basically is between me and Mark, but that's basically who I am, videographer. What do I know about invite only? It's more of what they don't know. <laughs> Andreas was cooking up some beats and Mark and Don were just in the back. We would, we'd go out back, smoke while they'd write. And then someone had the bright idea. Uh, I don't know how much we should say, but we ended up doing some shrooms that night, which was my first time. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you think we could do something like this? I never told and she was you like, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, my life. I think we got Chipotle and we mixed up some of the, <laughs> you know, the shroomies and the Chipotle. And then once we had that, it was like, we turned all the lights on and then recorded the next seven songs in like under 12 hours. It was crazy. I, I, I could feel the universe at my back and it's always looking out for me. Yeah, I know that the work I do today is gonna leave a legacy. Yeah, I see how they look at me and wanna know how I live so free. Yeah, I hear how they talk about this, so I already know I'm where I need to be. Yeah, I don't feel the need to question anything, cause I got faith in my dreams. It's my first time trying something like that, and we ended up doing it communally. It's so weird when you drink something expecting it to be water, and it's not. <laughs> but what is it though? It tastes like the elixir to life. I think that's what really made that experience what it is. Um, it was just a good time. We had the vibes going. We had the lights set up in the house. The house at the time was super sick. It was white marble floors, ceilings, walls, everything white. And then we just had the pink and blue lights going, But uh, which we all did shrooms. And then while Don recorded, Mark, me and Mark would be outside. He would be, we'd be smoking. Mark would be writing, and then they would go to switch. We'd take like an hour break. We'd it was just like on and off for what like eight or eight to ten hours straight. It was just it was crazy actually. Like, I don't know why, but I was just in the mood to, like, I was just in the mood to do shrooms that night, I guess. And I just, like, I just wanted to be, like, totally relaxed and just, like, unleash my most purest, authentic self. So, mission accomplished, by the way. Like, <laughs> I think we were really in a mindset of just, like, let's just create the best thing that we can create. And we really, like, got out of our own way, which is, like, what a lot of artists, I feel like, struggle with. So... Definitely a super interesting night. Uh, for me, when, when I do something like, you know, take a substance that helps me to think about things in a new creative way, to be more tapped into that source energy, it really, it allows everything to flow. And being in that flow state is crucial. You could, you could spend all this time trying to create and then as soon as you hit that flow state, there's nothing that can stop you. You're just in it. The gears are turning, you know, everything's rolling. Everything comes out so effortless. One night they recorded the whole album. I knew we had an album, but I didn't know like what to do with it. And I didn't know like 
when we were going to do anything with it. Yeah, I've just been working on some stuff, but if you need someone to jump in and man the camera for a second. And we just like sat on those nine songs for like a couple years. That's a, that's a crucial point that people don't realize. You know, I have people that hit me up and they're like, oh, bro, you ever going to drop that song we did together? It's like, yeah, I'm making sure that it's the right timing. I'm making sure that all of the ducks are in a row because you can't rush greatness. You know, the fact that I'm playing these songs two years later and I'm still just as excited, if not more excited, to share this with the world. It's like, that's how you know it's good music. I was like, yo, we gotta put this album out. And then we got back in the studio and we started revisiting all these like songs that we made from like two and a half years ago. And they were all like still like cut clean. Like they were like good to go. They just need mixed and mastered. So we ended up like recording the last song on the album, which was supposed to be like a bonus song um, called Update. And we were gonna put it out as like a bonus song, but I was like, no, nah, let's just put it on the actual like album. Update. We recorded that in the, in the Daytona studio. So you've got all these three different locations, three different vibes. Each time we had day after in the room, we didn't record without the producer. And I feel that brings a certain energy, a certain level of reverence to the songs. I love recording with the producers that, that are working on the beats because that way you're all part of the process. Play, this a love's day. I've been going harder for my son's sake. You, you, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't pause like right after that. No, one. but like, that sounds dope because that could have been like, uh, 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 like uh, a stutter, yeah. like a real stutter. Yeah, yeah. That would be sick, but um, do that part again. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. just take over from here. I've made so much music with other people, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of people have had this experience where you make music with other people, but it never sees the light of day because feelings get in the way, time gets in the way, budgets get in the way, but not here, yo. Not, not with this crew, bro. So whenever I met Mark, he was in a giant house, right? What about Caleb? He's just documenting our life, Nico. You know what I mean? Caleb behind the lens and behind the sticks. Kind of before we started working on Invite Only, um, one of my favorite memories that kind of kicked off this whole entire process was when we were building the studio. Every time I started coming after, I would have to bring my hoodie, and now we got official A Clue merch. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't even know if it's going to be a thing or not, I like, don't know, but, we but it's like an inside joke. I think there's like a hoodie on the, on the, um, on the website, but if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. You know? yeah, I don't they'll find shit. out. Man. Yeah, that's a large... Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. No, I appreciate you trusting me for everything. Yeah, bro. Hey, and I even got Don Jones merch on, man. Yeah. That's what <laughs> yeah. happens when you start working with the guys. Yeah. Yes, sir. And Mark approached me, you know, trusting my knowledge of what to put in the studio gear-wise, you know, acoustic-wise, was treating treating the room and everything. And he um, was like, yo, Caleb, I need you to put, put together a list of, you know, some gear and everything. And he's like, fuck it. I don't care what the price is. You name it. So I was like, all right, cool. Me, no, me, I'm budget friendly. I try to, you know, make it work pretty much. And Mark's like, I want the best. I need the best shit. Well, here's the fucking $10,000 studio or more. I don't even know how much it costs at this point. <laughs> but we're here now. So meeting Don for the first time was one of the coolest experiences. Easily the most genuine down to earth dude I've ever met. You know, being around the guy, he just has this aurora about him and this beautiful energy. He's just such a good dude. And meeting Don, I mean, really changed my perspective on how I should take on certain things in my life because he has this constant positivity. We all knew that what we had was special, but we, we, we really didn't feel comfortable with just releasing it or rushing the project. We knew that we needed to do something and do it right. Um, eventually, that missing piece that we were missing was Caleb, the engineer. He really took the project and what we had there, all the rubs, all the versions. He cleaned it up. We rewrote some verses, some hooks, and polished it, polished everything up. And once we got Caleb involved, like the project took on a whole new life. This definitely is one of the biggest projects I've been a part of. Um, I would say it 
I had the most hands-on experience with this one and I had the most creative control when it came to decision making and you know being a part of it. Um, I was blessed to have such good people to work with so Mark and Don and even the day after give him big credit on the beats too. Um, you know these guys really gave me something and handed me a project that you know was pretty well put together and it just being able to put my touch and create some stuff and turn it into what it is and us all working together kind of created the biggest project I've ever been a part of. It's cool though because you know like in that process you know we we had some like collaborative uh, effort between all of us to like say like we like these kind of mixes or like we like let's change this or change that and like we we all had input on it which I think is what makes it the most special instead of just one person saying like oh this is how it should be like to this too which is cool bro like yeah bro, I can literally just if anything like and say I needed to use my laptop or whatever no one knew about this project it's been in the vault it's been in the safe they finally cracked the code a little bit and now they're finally releasing it which is sick i've worked with other people in the past and they tend to spend money on the cover art get the beats or work on a video but when it comes to the rollout process they tend to not drop the ball but not put as much effort and honestly that's where you have to go even twice as hard the rollout itself is everything and what you do even before and after you release is just as crucial um, yeah, just because you release the, the project or the music does not mean that it's over. That's actually when the work's really start. Uh, this a bet I'm willing to take. I had a bet on myself, I got a million to make. This month threw a dub in the bank. And this once I'm willing to say that this shit got me feeling away. Up upgrade after upgrade. Found it. Yes, sir. DJ, the flesh. But like now that you've been like touching the project. Hey, hey, hey. The stick is they ordered off of the Webby video full production. We got management working on the details right now. So. Dog, there's no such thing as too much cake. Hey, we're about to catch a vibe right now. Hey, I'll take it. Dude, I'll grab the changes for the song. Dude, you ready? You ready? No, it's done. All right, dude. Did you find that at the store? I need that one. Oh, this not Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>